Hey, Johnny Valentine here with Gain Solar. I'm just going to be doing a video going over um, just kind of a, a brief description of the four main off grid and grid tie battery backup inverter chargers that I would install in somebody's house. Um, there's a lot of inverters out there and there's a lot of inverter chargers and those are those are two different pieces of equipment the inverter charger can invert power off a battery bank but it can also use the grid or a generator or some other AC source to charge the battery so that's what an inverter charger does uh, whereas just a regular inverter is not going to be able to charge the battery it can only pull power off of a, a battery bank and convert it to AC power so I'm just going to talk about inverter chargers and um, I put I have put regular inverters in houses with not inverter chargers, but the main ones that I uh, install are, um, they're all UL listed. They're all uh, UL 1741, which means they, they comply with what a grid tie inverter should. As far as UL standards go, they, they have anti-islanding, so they're not going to push power back onto the grid if the power's out. Um, the inverters I'm talking about, they all, they all output 240. So when you're talking about inverters, um, it's you're looking for 120 volt power, but uh, you look, single phase 120 volt is you think of an outlet. Uh, split phase 120 volt is um, like a dryer or a water heater or a, a, an electric oven. So that you have split phase 120, and then or you have regular 120 volt, and then you have split phase 122 40, and um, I'm going to be talking about split phase 12240 because that's what most people want, and the reason you want that. A call here, hold on. The reason you want split phase 12240 is because uh, well pumps and things like that. Anything, if you have something in your house that runs off uh, 240, you need to be able to start that. And most people that are doing solar have well pumps, and they want to be able to run those pumps. And um, you're not going to do that with a 120 volt inverter unless you run it through a transformer like an Outback X240 or something like that. Um, so, just don't want to go too long here, so I'm going to show you these inverters. Uh, first one, I'm just showing you out of one of my vendor's catalogs. There it is right there. It's the Outback Radiant. Uh, it's the GS8048. Uh, now they have the GS8048As. Um, there's also a 4048, and there's a number of different export models. Uh, Outback Radian and the 8048A it retails for about $4,400, so it's a pretty expensive inverter. Um, they're all expensive. People ask me all the time, is it expensive? I just started to say back, everything's expensive. Um, the uh, and One other thing I'm going to say about all these inverters is... Um, I highly recommend that if you're going to get the inverter and you're going to spend this kind of money on a solar system, then you're, you want to go ahead and uh, buy there. Some one of my customers one time he called it the Gazintas and the Gazantas, and uh, the goes into's and the goes on to's. So you, the, all these inverter manufacturers, they make their own interconnection equipment, and what it does is it takes you know the sprawling. You see some of these old systems, and they take up a whole wall. Well, if you have all the interconnection equipment, it's usually a box that goes on the bottom of the inverter or on the side of the inverter, and it, it's a place where you can have all your DC breakers and your AC breakers, all your overcurrent protection. Uh, if you're going to have a shunt uh, to monitor current going in and out of the batteries, it's just it just makes every installation so much smoother. So. Uh, I highly recommend if you're going to buy an inverter, buy the interconnection equipment. So when I'm telling you prices of the inverters, I'm, I'm not factored in the price of the interconnection equipment, which is it's going to be more money, but you'd be glad you did get it all, or if you just buy a pre-wired inverter. Um, if you want to save money on, on a solar installation, put the panels up yourself. Don't try to wire the inverter yourself unless you really feel like you can. Uh, next inverter, especially not an Outback Radiant, because it's super tight inside those. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is the SMA. So that's an SMA. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, it's good enough. That's a Sunny Island, and that is a 6048. Um, 
or uh, the Sunny Island 6048, it's 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 an AC coupled all the way system, so um it's going to it's a battery inverter, it's an inverter charger, but it it can turn on other Sunny Island grid tie inverters and and use them to power the solar and it, it and, and that all seamlessly integrates and it's probably the simplest system to hook up. Uh, but it's probably the most expensive too, and it works it works fine off grid, but it also does really good in grid tie battery backup. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the radio in a second because I just totally got off track there. The 8048A, it's uh, you know a couple of the benefits of it is it's got um, you can readily interchange out the power modules inside. So if you could have a couple in like in a Faraday cage or something, and if they got fried, you could swap those in. You could also um, uh, keep a you know spare board for the 8048A. It's got a ton of controls. It can AC couple, um, but you know it comes with the FlexMax charge. That if you get the FlexMax Outback charge controllers and all their um, hub and their um, Mate 3, they all talk to each other and they, it sells back to the grid. So it's a, it can it can actually grid tie and sell power back to the grid. And uh, so it's a grid tie battery backup or a hybrid inverter. And um, it, most of these inverters, they'll surge about twice what um, the rated output is, which on the Radian, it's uh, at 8,800 watts. And that's usually in the name of the inverter. So if it's 8048A, you know it's 8,000 watt inverter and uh, 48 volt. Uh, so the, the Sunny Island, yeah, that's the next one I talked about, 6,000 watt inverter. And um, what's cool about those is they can you know, readily AC couple and I can't talk about every single thing on an inverter. Alright, so the next one, so the Sunny Islands benefit is the AC coupling and um, it's also really easy to put together. The next one, this is actually the inverter that, this was one of the first ones that came out. Can't really see it too well, but it's a Schneider Electric or a XW. It was a Xantrex, now it's just the XW. And it is the XW Plus, it's a 6848. And that inverter is like $3,500 on the internet. Um, I have this inverter installed at a family member's house on where I live. It was the first one to you know, have like a real seamless interconnection, set of interconnection equipment. and I just put a lot in, put a lot of those in when I did this job. And it's worked great for the past four or five years we've had it. Uh, Schneider, their stuff is... They're kind of neck and neck in price with the Radian stuff, if you want to price one of those out. What I don't like about them is their tech support. I don't think their tech support is near as good as Outback, or um, and I haven't had any SMA tech support issues yet, so I can't really comment on that. Um, the, 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 the Schneider inverters are um, they're good inverters. I'm not going to talk about a bad inverter here. Um, they, they could surge a lot of power charge batteries. They can also AC couple. All these inverters can AC couple, but I'd say the Radian and the SMA are probably the easiest to AC couple with because you don't have to do any kind of like mad scientist water heater dump loads. Uh, the next inverter, which is the cheapest in the bunch, but still gets in, is the Magnum. This is a Magnum inverter. This is my AEE catalog, by the way. 2016, I'm proud of it. All right, and it's got a, you can see how hip the family is that has the Magnum. I love Magnums. I, I do a lot of Magnums and a lot of Radians. And um, the Magnum inverter, the 4448PAE, is $2,200 on the internet. It's a $2,200 inverter, so it's a lot cheaper than all the others. It does not tie to the grid, but it can AC couple, which means you could take it, you could put a grid tie inverter in the dedicated load sub panel that the Magnum serves and um, and, and you could flow, you, the energy will actually flow back through the Magnum and go into the grid so and, and then so it can it can AC couple but it can't uh, tie to the grid itself. It's kind of confusing so that's something you got to talk to solar guys about. Uh, if you're gonna AC couple a Magnum they have an ACLD 40 um, diversion load controller and it's really cool it's like a kind of like a rectifier. It gets into really technical AC coupling talk, but it allows you to heat water with the excess energy of your solar array when the grid is down instead of just turning the solar array off and kind of, it gives you three-stage charging. Um, the Magnum inverters, 
they're bulletproof in my opinion that if, uh, if you're gonna have a bulletproof inverter I've got probably 20 or 30 of them out there haven't had really any problems um, they're field serviceable they're uh, mobile invert they were they kind of evolved out of the mobile inverter market and the company that owns them Sensata they're, they're making military inverters they're making all kinds of stuff uh, they make up stuff for the telecom and the utility industries and I really like Magnum's interconnection equipment. It's a the Magnum is a very affordable inverter. It's very powerful enough to start most well pumps. You can stack Magnum inverters together. You can stack all these inverters. And which and when I talk about stacking inverters, you you have multiple inverters of the same type, um, and you interconnect them all up through like Ethernet. They have like their own Ethernet interconnection systems, and they can work together and double and triple and quadruple and octuple the power uh, output of the inverters. Uh, but I do like Magnums because of their they're very affordable and um, they have five year warranty. They're made in the U.S. Tech support's easy to deal with. Now they have their own PT100 charge controller, which I really like the PT100 because um, it works seamlessly with the Magnum, and you can see what they're all doing through the same um, through the same controller, which all these inverters have their own controller, and uh, Magnum's controller is. Uh, it's, it, it, all this stuff is complicated. If you can work a cell phone, you can probably learn to work your uh, power system, but it's all complicated. So that's my basic talk about the four main off-grid and grid-type battery backup inverters that I would uh, sell somebody. I'd probably be most apt to go with a Magnum unless they wanted to grid-tie, and then I'd use a Radian if they had money to not saying money to burn, but um, the most expensive one would be the SMA, but that'd also be the most seamless, and it's going to offer you the most power uh, when the solar's working. So I can talk more about these things. I obviously talk about these things all day long, and it can get real nerdy. And I don't want to talk too much because I might say something that's wrong, and then people rip me. <laughs> so once again, it's Johnny Valentine talking about off-grid inverters and uh, hope you learned something. Give us a call if you're trying to pick out the right inverter and we can help you figure it out because that's the last thing I want you to do is buy something that you know you didn't want to use or you can't use or you buy the wrong one and uh, that seems like it happens a lot but uh, thank you for watching.